Getting down to business, this show is brought to you through the offices of Supervisor Mark Lesko, the Brookhaven Business Advisory Council, and a lot of people that are volunteering to help bring this to you, inclusive of the various businesses that we have on the show each and every week. But today's show is going to be a little bit special, because today's show, we have Supervisor Mark Lesko with us. Supervisor, pleasure to have you. Brian, great to be here. Good. Glad you're, glad you're joining us. Yep. Start with the square one. When we've been introducing the various companies, we just really, really want to get to know who they are. Mm -hmm. So let me ask this question. As, what is exactly the role of the supervisor? Well, I'm uh, the chief financial officer of the town and, in effect, the CEO of the town. I run the day-to-day -day operations of the town of Brookhaven. And I'm also the presiding officer of the, over the town board. So I play both an executive function as well as a legislative function. Uh, but as I mentioned, pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm running the town. And uh, probably the most important role I play is I propose the budget for the town uh, year to year. Uh, the town board, uh, town council members have to approve the budget, but I'm the one that gets that process started, uh, and uh, that, that, that takes up a good, good portion of my time. I would imagine with this economy, it must... It it's, must be a challenge, too. It is tough. I mean, we have, you know, shrinking revenues. I mean, everybody's been reading about all f levels of government uh, losing revenues, but we've lost tens of millions of dollars in revenue from mortgage tax receipts, from our landfill, through fees at our landfill. Um, you know, the, the economy fell off a cliff, and it stayed there for many years, and we just have not seen those revenue sources rebound, which puts stress on our funds, on our taxing funds. Uh, and so it's been a real struggle to try to keep our ba uh, budget balanced uh, year to year. Right. So the main goal then is increasing the revenue. Of course, there's different ways of doing that, but by growing businesses in Brookhaven? That's, that's the plan. Um, the, the Part of the problem is uh, the real estate market just really hasn't rebounded. So uh, with real estate uh, goes mortgage taxes. Um, and we see also uh, the real estate market affect our landfill because we take a lot of construction debris in from new construction. Mm. We really haven't seen much of that either. Um, so it's really about cutting costs now, uh, and that's what we've done. In fact, in our general fund, we've cut almost $30 million uh, year to year uh, out of our general fund since I've taken office, and really that's been my primary focus, along with continuing to provide property tax relief to not only our residents but our, our small businesses. Uh, we've frozen taxes two years in a row. Uh, I'm working on my budget now. It's going to be a tough one, but uh, my goal is to freeze taxes or at least come close next year. Uh, so that's really the major challenge that I face right now. Right. You know, and I noticed that actually in the campaign, just going back to 2009, in some of the one of the quotes that you had, well, it was exactly that. You stated that you wanted to keep taxes in line with not raising the property taxes and cutting cutting out expenses. Yep, and, and you know we're proud of that. I mean. You, you know, we've, we've really, I wouldn't say we just took a scalpel to our spending. We took an ax to it, to mm. be frank. Uh, we entered into a, a new collective bargaining agreement with our blue-collar workers and our white-collar workers, uh, saving us millions of dollars over the course of the, those contracts. Um, and we've held the line on taxes, uh, and that's been a good thing, while not really reducing services. But the problem is we can't keep doing this year after year after year without having the economy come back. Right. Uh, and we need our tax base to expand. That's where our, our wonderful business community comes into play. Um, and we need to see growth in this town. Uh, we actually are the one jurisdiction, I would say one, on Long Island that is poised for good, smart, progressive growth going forward. Uh, we got to be smart about it, but we could really see an economic boom in, uh, in Brookhaven, uh, the likes of which Long Island has never seen. Yeah. Well, I've noticed the, the Wall Street rating for the bonds, that's been, that's been steady yep. uh, we kept all our, along. We kept our good bond rating. We have very high bond ratings. Uh, I've had multiple uh, meetings with the credit rating agencies, <laughs> and believe me, that sometimes those can be difficult. People don't realize how uh, engaged those rating agencies are in the process, uh, but we've maintained our very high bond ratings. I'm incredibly proud about that. And, you know, they had some good things to say about our management team and approach, and that's, uh, that's a positive not just for the township, but also, I think, for all the residents and businesses in the township. Without that, if you're paying a higher level of interest because of a low rating, that's going to cost everybody. It's going to make everything much more difficult to do. Exactly, yep. exactly. Now, you've got a couple of initiatives that you've started a while ago. The Accelerate Long Island happens to be one of them. Mm -hmm. Could you explain what that is? Sure. Uh, it started with a very simple question that had a very difficult answer. The, the question was, um, how do you create some semblance of a Silicon Valley on Long Island? Uh, a lot of politicians say that. 
They don't know what they're talking about. I said it, and at the time I didn't know what I was talking about. So I decided to do a deep dive into that issue and tr really try to understand how you do something like that. And it, believe me, it took 50 years plus to create Silicon Valley. Um, and there are other regions in the country that are somewhat similar. But So what we did was we went to our IDA and we worked with the Rausch Foundation and we hired a consultant to come in and help us answer that question. And really what it's about is building an innovation-based economy creating this entrepreneurial ecosystem that supports startup companies, that supports companies based on research at major research institutions. And our consultant kind of surprised us with some observations. And by the way, he was from Silicon Valley. And he said that we have a huge head start when it comes to building an innovation-based economy because we have world-class assets on Long Island. Two of them are in Brookhaven, Stony Brook University, where we are right now, and Brookhaven National Lab. We have Cold Spring Harbor Lab, where they discovered DNA. We have the Feinstein Institute uh, that's part of North Shore LIJ Health System. Uh, we have major world-class institutions with brilliant people uh, coming up with research ideas and research projects in abundance. What don't we have? We don't have the entrepreneurial class, the young, aggressive, hungry entrepreneurs who will commercialize those technologies. We also don't have venture capital flowing to Long Island in, in, in any great way. Um, that venture, and by the way, we, we live 60 miles away from the venture capital capital of the world in New York City. Yeah. Their capital flows out to Silicon Valley, oh. up to Route 128 in Boston, areas that are mature markets. We need to change that. Right. So that's an image. <laughs> It seems like it's more of an image thing than, exactly. than anything else. Exactly. And, and, you know, one of the images that we had on Long Island uh, was that we're too fragmented, that, that, that major regions, major institutions didn't work together. Well, that, in my view, all changed with Accelerate. So what we did was we brought together what we call the Big Five. It's actually become, depending on how you're counting Big Seven or Big Eight, I'll get to that in a minute. But the Big Five, as I mentioned, was Bro Brookhaven Lab, Stony Brook University, Cold Spring Harbor Lab, uh, North Shore LIJ, and Hofstra University. And really for the first time, they all came together at one table and decided to work collaboratively, cooperatively, regionally to put together an initiative to commercialize technology innovations at our, our major research institutions. This came at a time that was opportune because uh, the Department of Energy, which obviously oversees Brookhaven National Lab, about two years ago, uh, they had a complete change in mindset. And now they make a priority commercializing technology uh, research at, at that lab. So it's a perfect time to make this change. And then we added some big players. Uh, we added the uh, Long Island Association, the major uh, chamber of commerce for the region. Uh, we added CA Technologies. Uh, we added a early stage venture capital fund, Canrock Ventures, and those are really the founding partners and now they're, they're going about the business of incorporating the effort. But the idea is pretty simple. It's to bring those communities together, the researchers, the entrepreneurs, and the venture capitalists, bring them together and have them cook up companies based on the research at these major research institutions. Right. It's a great idea, but I know a lot of these, Brookhaven Labs, Stony Brook, they've developed their own products. Yes. So, you had organizations that were almost competing against each other to develop the next new thing that's going to save the world. So by bringing them together, they, obviously they have now seen the light where they know that they can accomplish more as a team. They're, they're, and they all have what are called tech transfer offices, and they all do a good job. And yes, they have created companies individually. Uh, the lab was primarily a patent and license shop. Their technologies they would patent and then license to existing companies, generally speaking. Um, Stony Brook's done a fantastic job, frankly, with their incubators uh, and their tech transfer office uh, creating companies, uh, Cold Spring Harbor as, as well, uh, and, and North Shore LIJ, Feinstein Institute, they've created companies as well. But no single institution was thinking regionally. Because don't forget, these researchers, they may start the company up initially, but time tells you that they're not going to stay with the company. They're researchers. They're going to they're leave those companies and go back to research. You need the entrepreneurs, the CEOs, that are going to take those small startups and, and grow them into mezzanine level companies or large companies. Yeah. And that's what we just don't have in abundance. And so we have, a, we have a wonderful business community, and we need to introduce those folks to these researchers so that they can take those companies to the next level. Right. So we really have more of a challenge, bringing in, the, uh, bringing in the money. Well, the money will come as soon as we can actually show that there are viable businesses here. Correct. So, right, there's a big change. You it's know, a guy big, that's developing a project, you know, developing a new drug, to actually go out there and represent that drug in a business sense. 
It's a whole different game. It is, and and the the, the what, what ultimately, if this works, and it doesn't have, you know, it, it's going to be its own thing. Long Island has its own identity, and and the idea is that you're focusing primarily on uh, information technology, biotech, pharmaceutical, life science research, energy research, alternative energy research, smaller niche markets like smart grid technology or uh, or cyber cyber security, um, and the the notion is that if you can you can lay the groundwork for the creation of of companies that are going to blossom, you're going to create wealth. With wealth, you're going to create a ripple effect throughout the regional economy, so that that will affect our small businesses, our real estate market, our housing market, and so forth. And it, it will kind of a rising tide lifts all ships. And the notion is that if you create these great startup companies, eventually they're going to rise the tide. Sure, and it goes back to more building. Yep. which makes more building waste, which right. goes back to the revenue stream, which helps out the town also. Exactly. So everything absolutely helps exactly. e each other. It is a long-term play, though. I mean, no one mm -hmm. should think this is going to happen in six months. Uh, this is a 5, 10, 15-year play at a minimum. But we have already accomplished the hardest part, which is to put together the research assets. Once you have the research assets, the rest kind of flows. Uh, but we also, I think, need to change the image of Long Island. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Y you ask the, the average resident on the, on the street corner if uh, Long Island's business friendly or the average politician or, frankly, the average business owner. Um, they would generally, I think, still say, not really. Uh, it's not a business friendly environment. We have to change that image. Now, if you go to all the businesses, like the BBAC did, the, the advisory committee in Brookhaven, and conducted a survey of most of our businesses, a, a good chunk of them, um, 80 plus percent of them said that Brookhaven is a great place to do business. So there's a disconnect there. And I think a lot of it is about changing that image and making it clear to not just people regionally, but people nationally, that this region is a fantastic place to do business. This is where you want to start up your company. It's a hot place with a lot of great ideas flying around. And if you do that, you're going to start attracting some venture capital. And it, it, so this program, it, does this have anything? And it certainly, certainly sounds like it does with the Ron Konkuma Hub project. It, it sure does. Um, I, it's, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's in terms of uh, uh, local areas where, where we should focus our economic development efforts. I would uh, suggest to you that Ron Konkum is second to none. Uh, it really, many people think of it as the prime work, what's called transit-oriented development locations, maybe in the country, at least on the East Coast. You have between 14 and 17,000 riders pass through that station every single day. It's uh, within a mile of the Long Island Expressway, MacArthur Airport, and the busiest train station in the LIRR system. It's right on the spine of Long Island, in the center of Long Island. Um, but ha it's proximate. It's close to Stony Brook University. It's close to downtown Patchogue, Port Jefferson. Um, so it's got a lot of incredibly attractive elements. But my view is that if you can make that a fun place for people to live and work, Mm -hmm. so that you get these young entrepreneurs who live in the nice, fun apartments, and they can walk down the street to an incubator or to an office building where they have their new company set up. That's a win-win for everybody. Oh, absolutely. Take yep. care of the, the commuting problem also, because yep. traffic is uh, sometimes an issue getting around. Well, and, and that goes to the issue of uh, human capital, uh, because you might get your, your entrepreneur who might get seed funding or venture capital funding and a great idea coming out of, let's say, Stony Brook University. But it, it, as, you, as you scale up that company, you need to attract a workforce. And these are going to be high-skilled, relatively high-paid workers, computer engineers and so forth, likely, uh, or uh, you know, pharmaceutical researchers, that type of thing. You need to have proximity to New York City. Uh, and that workforce, so you mu you're going to have some re reverse commuting. Mm -hmm. And Ronkonkoma actually is a prime location for reverse commuting. The MPA, M MTA is putting a second track in, so you're going to actually have trains running back and forth. Uh, and that's incredibly exciting. And then you're going to have east side access to Grand Central Station in New York City. So you're going to be just a little over an hour from Grand Central Station from Ronkonkoma. That's, that's, that's huge in terms of being able to attract workers to come out to new companies in Brookhaven. Right. Even that transition period also. Because once you get the business started, you have a few people coming out just part-time, yep. helping out the local businesses as they get ramped up. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, it, again, not a short-term play. This is going to take a while. But I think it's a vital piece to the puzzle in terms of really in improving the economic climate for the entire town.